It starts with a pinprick on the heel of a tiny baby just hours old. Then a few cries and a few drops of blood imprinted in five circles on a basic paper card. It all looks so simple, but what's collected on these samples from babies just beginning their lives could tell a complex story that changes them forever. It's great because that one tiny little blood spot, we can get so many answers. Answers that come from newborn screening done on every baby born in the U.S. before they leave the hospital. The tests look for certain conditions that might not be obvious at birth. A few you likely know, including cystic fibrosis or sickle cell anemia. But many are so rare they impact just a handful or maybe only a few hundred children nationwide, but may have devastating or deadly consequences. How critical are these screenings when it comes to babies and their health? It's absolutely critical that every baby is screened. So most of these conditions are incredibly rare. Generally, there's not a family history. Family may have never even heard of this. A doctor may have never heard of it. Susan Tanksley has. She oversees the Texas State Lab responsible for running tests on hundreds of thousands of newborn screening cards. This represents 88 different babies. Babies whose cards are punched and run through what feels like an assembly line of old and new school testing techniques and equipment. And it happens in labs just like this all over the country. So with this instrument, we're able to screen for 44 different disorders. Um, and that's core conditions and secondary conditions on the recommended uniform screening panel. The recommended uniform screening panel, or RUSP, is an ever-expanding list of conditions created by a federal committee. That committee reviews evidence, listens to testimony from experts and advocates, and then recommends tests they think states should perform on newborns. Right now, the RUSP is limited to just 37 conditions and diseases, but there's nothing uniform about its implementation or newborn testing in general nationwide as states make their own mandates. Our national investigative team discovered the things your baby is screened for depend on where you live, with each state deciding for itself which screening it can carry out while facing challenges with funding, equipment, and qualified staff. I can tell you that any newborn screening program is doing the absolute best that they can with the resources that they have and under the constraints that they, that they have. Those constraints create disparities, and from state to state, they could mean the difference between life and death. Your life shouldn't be dictated by the zip code you live in. In many places, it is, and the loss of Elisa Seeger's son set her on a mission to change that. I don't want another mother to be me, and I don't want another child to suffer the way he suffered because I can't really explain how bad that suffering was. Aiden Seeger seemed like a happy, healthy six-year-old. It was problems with his vision that led to a diagnosis of adrenal leukodystrophy, or ALD. The disease, which impacts the brain and nervous system, first took Aiden's sight, then his ability to function, and eventually his life just a year later. And I said, why are we not testing for this condition? Because if we would have known at birth, he could have been monitored and treated before it was too late for him. ALD testing eventually came first in New York, where the Seegers live, after Elisa lobbied at the state level to have the condition added to their screening panel in 2013. Then in 2016, she successfully helped make the case to get ALD on the RUSP. But more than seven years later, only 35 states in D.C. include it in their newborn screening, even though it can be fatal, as it was with Aiden. They're already taking those blood spots from the baby's heel, so this is something additional at the lab level. And it's just mind-boggling to me why this is such a difficult battle. It's a war to save children that's being fought state by state, with borders often creating a dividing line that can be deadly. Our national investigative team spent months comparing data from the U.S. Health Resources and Services Administration, or HRSA, which tracks screening. Our team found there isn't a single state in the U.S. testing for all 37 conditions on the RUSP, although Illinois and Missouri come close, with 36 conditions on their screening panels. Hawaii tests for the fewest number of RUSP disorders, only 29. The things that are on the list now, I cannot come up with a health-based reason for them not to be uniformly screened in all 50 states and however many territories. It's a failure to not have them screened. It's another failure of our health care non-system. Strong words from Dr. Ned Kalaj, the man leading the committee that approves recommendations to the RUSP before they're given final approval by the health secretary. 
He says his highest priority after becoming chair last year was to try and get every state to implement testing for conditions already on the rest. Kalanja's committee can recommend all they want. When it comes to actually carrying out the testing, that's out of their control. I would say it's discouraging and dismaying to have a condition that we've recommended that we feel meets that bar and that those conditions aren't being tested for. You can <clears throat> have two states that are just, you know, one line apart on the map and have very different screening lists. And it doesn't stop with the conditions listed on the RUSP. Many states require tests that are not on that federal list. Those differences create even more disparities. We found as many as 88 different newborn screenings being performed around the country. Connecticut tests for the most conditions, 73, while Alabama currently tests for the fewest, with 31. But their mandates aren't always based on impact. For instance, we found 16 states in D.C. test for a condition known as 2,4-dienoyl-CoA reductase deficiency, but there are only two known cases of the disorder. On the flip side, about 20,000 babies are born each year with a potentially fatal cytomegalovirus, or CMV, but only one state tests every baby for it. They're taking the choice away from us when they don't screen. There she goes. Sarah and Keith Strevel wish they could have had more moments like this with their daughter, Bella. <laughs> Activating her tiny hearing aids on her first birthday gave them a precious gift. Bella's infectious laugh and smile captured on video. CMB cost Bella her hearing, caused seizures and other medical problems. The disease wasn't part of the newborn screening panel where they live in Kentucky and was only caught later when she went to the NICU for tests that would reveal the difficult road ahead. So she was completely uh, non-mobile. She was non-verbal. Um, so everything had to be done for her. And you just got to take your own day at a time and keep moving forward. In the days and months that followed, Bella was their superhero. Her battle eased by the sound of wind chimes, the feel of her giant stuffed giraffe, and the purple wheelchair that still sits waiting for her in the family's living room. After her death at just three years old, the Strebel's fight continued. They successfully lobbied for a state law named in Bella's honor. It requires targeted CMV screening for newborns who are symptomatic, something her parents want expanded to universal testing, not just where they live, but across the country, with a condition hopefully one day added to the federal list. How difficult is it to keep up the fight to get it on the RUSP? Do you lose motivation? We kind of feel like that RUSP is out there and it's, it's kind of the magical ending, <laughs> but we don't have a clue when that's gonna happen and we can't wait. A wait for testing that could turn little lives that are just beginning on their heel, all because of where they were born.